How you doing? Uh, I'm Larry Mack, 96.1 KLPX. You're watching a Zoom call interview with Martin Barr, formerly of Jethro Tull. And he is in Miami right now or in near Miami. And we're here in Tucson, Arizona. Martin, thank you so, so much for uh, spending a part of your uh, busy day with us here in Tucson. Hi, Larry. I, I, I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you. And, and, and I'm just going to be a real horrible person at the beginning of this interview just to say that I'm still Jethro Tull's guitar player. Oh, you are? Okay, I... I, I, I but, well, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those mute points because Jethro Tull never finished um, officially. Okay. So, and, and because what I do mm -hmm. uh, in, inherently involves a lot of Jethro Tull music, yes. I, I describe myself as Jethro Tull's guitar player. I always say there's only two Tull guitar players ever. The main one was Mick Abrams, uh, who, who did This Was and back in 68. Mm -hmm. And then I joined and I, and I was the second guitar player. I, la I lasted 45 years. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call you uh, a horrible person for that. You were just correcting well, me I, and I appreciate yeah, that. I, I don't. If, if somebody did it to me, I'd be really angry. <laughs> so, no, no, <laughs> I, I appreciate corrected. it. You know, uh, to me, this is a conversation. I'm learning about you. And I, uh, I, I met you, uh, I, I want to say... 20 plus years ago after a show up in phoenix at the mesa amphitheater uh we oh, had a brief conversation but it was a, i had hair back then so yeah, and me you know so it was a long time ago so you got this show january 30th here in tucson mm -hmm. uh, it's uh celebrating the 50th anniversary of aqualung yeah yeah and who is in your band because i know you've got a couple uh tall members in there as well yeah, uh, it, it's a complex band that the structure is a four piece band and we do gigs all year, UK, Europe, Australia, South America, four of us, myself, Dan Crisp on guitar and vocals, Darby Todd on drums, Alan Thompson on bass, and we do everything, you know, that's a great band, that they're phenomenal musicians and we can play anything from the Toll catalogue that you care to throw at us and anything else as well. We can play Porcupine Tree, Government Mule, The Beatles. Uh, it's, it's a great band. So that's the core. And then we add a little bit of cream on the cake. And this time it's Clive Bunker on drums from Tolls. Well, he was on Aqualung. Mm -hmm. We have two girl singers uh, who are really fantastic. That They do the acoustic songs and they just lift them into another Layer, uh, layer another level of, of uh, beautiful music uh, and uh, sometimes we have Dee Palmer um, mm -hmm. she, she's indisposed mm. she, she's a, in, a, in the mid 80s and uh, let's she's indisposed so she wasn't able to come on this tour I know that she was originally on the original version before COVID stopped the world yes she was uh, and she had we had a great time um but as I say, she's in her mid eighties and uh, without going into the details mm -hmm. of how, how hard it is to tour at that age, let alone my age, uh, we just have to say that unfortunately she, she had to uh, say couldn't, she couldn't do it. So what is it like to get out there after all these years in front of new crowds, especially you know after the last, I presume, last year or so that you guys were kind of sitting at home like the rest of us, yeah. and now you're back on the road. What's it like to be back out again, A, on the road after a year and a half, but also to be performing this music 50 years later? Did you even imagine that when you put this out 50 years ago? Yeah, uh, absolutely not. But it, it's, it's like a rebirth, you know, in ourselves. You know, we're, we're, I, I play guitar every day of my life, but, but it's different playing in a room. <laughs> uh, but as soon as you get in front of people, it's a whole, obviously, it's a whole different ball game. But, but I love it. We all love it. So the, the, the first gig we did was we were like little schoolboys, you know, jumping and hollering and grinning from ear to ear. Playing live music is, is, is the best thing in the world. You can, uh, I, it's a privilege to be able to do it. And then for people to come and see you play is a, a double whammy. And, and, and that they, I, I think you can't fake it anymore. I've seen a few bands where, where I go, ooh, they don't really want to be on that stage. You know, they're just going through the motions. But, but we genuinely love playing, comes across to the audience and they love hearing this music because it's, it's still relevant today as it was uh, 50 years ago because the, the songs sound great. 
and sometimes we move them on a bit, you know, repolish them. Mm -hmm. but, but there's there's nothing we do that doesn't sound a hundred percent because we, we we have a huge catalog that we can do. Now, are you doing Aqualung in its entirety and then a bunch of other tall and some other maybe covers as well? Or is it just that, all Jethro Tall? Yeah, the first set is my favorites and some of my music. So it's probably about six pieces of music that, that are mine, songs, maybe one instrumental. And we're going to swap it around. Mm -hmm. The rest are our, our hits, favorite hits of Tull. Uh, and, and we change that, we update them, you know, we'll throw in a, a really weird track. Oh, just wow. so, so people go, oh my, I haven't heard that ever. I, I, I really want people to be on their toes, you know, that they don't know what to expect. Uh, and then the second set, we do a couple of hard hitting numbers and then we do all of Aqualung. And then uh, how's the response been uh, to this tour? Have people been coming out and just, have you been able to meet any of the uh, fans of Jethro Tull, but because of COVID, not really, yeah. but. Well, you, you know, it, it's, in fairness to the audiences, not, not this week or next week, but in a month, we're here for three months. Mm -hmm. We have to respect, we have a responsibility to deliver those concerts. Uh, so we're in a very strict bubble. I don't go and meet the audience. And if anybody comes within a mile of me without a mask, I just tell them, I say, I'm sorry, you know, we're, yeah. we have to be super careful. Please wear a mask. Um, it's it's the least we can do and, and and maybe it's not enough maybe it is but essentially i've, I've got a, a, a an emotional as well as a financial and moral um reason to do all these shows and and and, uh, and whatever it takes to do 60 shows in the next three months I, that's what i'm gonna do well you know i i've uh, talked to quite a few musicians over the last few months and a lot of them a lot of the general public doesn't understand why a COVID diagnosis on even a, a roadie can cause the tour to stop, but Absolutely. that also costs the band and yeah. the promoters and everybody a lot of income and even the people who work the shows who aren't the touring part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I am responsible because I, I, the, the, the one guy's going to have to say, we're not doing that. We can do that, but we're not doing that. And, and it's me. And, and I can do it because I'm 75 and I want to be, <laughs> I want to live a lot longer mm -hmm. uh, and I want to be healthy and, 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 and really I, I can lay the law down, but it's all for the, for the best po possible reasons. I'm, I'm not going to be unfriendly, but I, I, it has to be sensible. I have to be super careful. As far as when you were, you know, like a lot of people sitting, you know, on the couch for, for a year and a half or whatever before the tour, um, did you find your uh, creative juices flowing, wanting to write? You say you play every day. Is yeah. there any new music uh, from you uh, down the pike? Yeah, I, I, I literally have a little cassette player, like a dictaphone, and, and I put the cassette in, and every idea I come up with each day, I put them on the cassette. I've got about four cassettes of ideas, and then at some point I'm going to go back and revisit all of them, and the best ideas I'll develop. But uh, yeah, I, I, I never have a problem with uh, not being creative, but, but uh, picking up an instrument and, and having fun. And, and I, I, I picked the flute up again in, in lockdown and uh, started picking up where I left off 40 years ago with my flute playing. I bought an alto flute and, and I started getting back into that. Uh, there's always something in music and, and, and uh, you know, like I love listening to great music. It, it, it never disappoints me. It never lets me down. Well, you were talking a little while ago about, you know, some of the covers and some of the, uh, the bands, <laughs> some of the music your band likes to play. What in a two part question, what inspired you early on in your career to pick up an instrument? And then what do you like now? Is there any new newer bands or bands from the last 10 years that 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 you're like, wow, they're doing it right. I like this. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the second part, there probably are, but I don't necessarily get to hear them. Uh, I, I hear a lot of bad stuff, uh, but you know, I, I, I listen. I, I'm, I, I really want to find those bands that are writing, writing great songs, great music. Um, but I'm hungry for them, and and I'm still hungry. Um, but, uh, 
what was the first part? Of the oh, question? well, what inspired you originally? Is there oh, a musician right. or a, a style yeah. of music that originally inspired you? Well, well, I was a very shy, gangly, awkward school kid, uh, and I didn't fit into into all these clubs and little cliques that all the other guys were doing. Uh, I, I, I was just different, <laughs> not in an unpleasant way. And when I first saw a band play, uh, back when I was 14 years old, so that's 1956, 1960, I, I was like, ah, oh, this is exactly what I want to do. Because that, that, that through the music, that, that they, ha they became confident, you know, that they spoke through the music. They didn't have the sort of chat up lines to get the girlfriends or the great clothes and look really cool. I was never into that. But I, but I could talk through my music, I could communicate, and it was a done deal. I, I, it was the turning point in my life. Was the guitar the first instrument you picked up? Yeah, within a year I, I played flute because my dad was a big jazz fan and he bought me all these vinyl. The guitar players I didn't like because I just wanted to play rock and roll, but the flute players were fantastic and, and it inspired me to go and buy a flute. So I saw it when I was 15 and, and flute I learnt from a, you know, like a, a proper orchestra player. So I'm, I'm a proper flute player. Guitar, I just learned by ear. Oh, wow. So I had, but yeah, I had both those sides. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Jason Bonham, uh, and he was talking about how he drums by memory, basically. Yeah, and, sure. And, and, and I noticed that there's two different styles of musicians, the ones that learn properly and the ones that learn by, they just memorize stuff. Yeah. And sometimes they don't even know how to write music. But yeah. it seems like you've got both worlds there. Yeah, I've got a bit of both, and, and 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 most musicians. I mean, I play with a lot of orchestras, and and most of them envy rock musicians because you, if you whistled a tune, I'll pick up my guitar and I'll play it. That they have to write it, notation, and then play it. That that they don't have the ear to to, to go straight to their instrument. So it's a disadvantage for them, and unless you're reading. Bark, <laughs> start yes. reading Bark, then they've got a definite advantage. But yeah, I, I like the mixture and, and I use a hybrid. I, I use my own style of playing, of writing music. Uh, it, and it's a reference, it's a memory reference because I, I've got a massive catalog and, and it's all those little sort of harmonies and things I come up with. And there's no way I can remember every note that I think of. So uh, yeah, I, I, I've got books. I've got notebooks from the, the first Tull albums. Oh, wow. Little, yeah, little scratchy things of what to do. Yeah. So do you, do you ever, uh, like you're doing the 50th anniversary, obviously you're playing Aqualung in its entirety. Prior yeah. to this tour, I'm sure there were songs on that album you haven't played in years because you were, you know, doing the hits yeah. from, from yeah. your career. What, yeah. what was it like relearning some of those songs again? It's a challenge to make them sound as good or better than the original. So if you take a song like My God, it's a piano piece, uh, huge flute solo, how am I going to do that? So I, I came up with a way of playing it all on guitar, uh, arranging it between the two, two guitar players. And then the, the middle section, uh, I have a piece of music called Palladio, by a classical composer called Carl Jenkins, and, and it is heavy. It is really rock and roll, but it's classical. And, and of course, people are going, ah, oh, what's he gonna do now? And, and we play this piece and, and like, they love it. It's, it's amazing and it's perfect for, for my God. So you know, there's always a, a, a way around things and, and, and you have to find the one that enhances it. You can't hey. make it less. Have you thought about recording any of these shows and releasing a live record a version of it? Uh, Since it seems I've got like the a little DVD bit... from the, the last American tour, which was similar. It was a sort of, you know, the 50 years tour. So it had some of Aqualung in it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't want to... I, I hate bands that saturate the market, like Jethro Tull did, <laughs> <laughs> with best of albums. Like and and, and I, I never saw them. You know, uh, uh, somebody had asked to get one signed. I go, oh, it's the best of album. I've never seen this. And then I look at the tracks and say, well, the last best of album was pretty well identical. Why? Why are we doing it? I I, I hate it. I I can't do repetition. I got to move on. 
Yeah, I have a, I have a buddy of mine. He was in a, a band from the 90s that had some success called the Gin Blossoms. And we went to high school together, ran into him one time after uh, their label had released a best of record. And he wasn't yeah. too happy about it because he was like, we weren't even consulted. <laughs> so- no, that's right. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I, I'm never, believe me. But, 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 I, but my, my criteria is, is, is it's got to be completely fresh. And, and the 50 years CD I did, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to drop. I don't want to name names, but 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 I, I re-recorded every track. There wasn't one track that I thought, well, we've already got a version of that. I'll just mix it up and put it on. No, it's it's cheating. Somebody if somebody spends precious dollars on a product, mm-hmm. it has to be the best I can do. Then I then I have no, you know, I, I have complete faith in it. If people don't like it. It's fine, you know. Nobody has to like everything, but but if the few that really appreciate, you've gone to a lot of trouble mm-hmm. in the presentation and the recording of it. That's the reward. Well, you know, I was watching an interview with you a while back, and you were talking about, and, and I see a lot of this too with new music, with new bands. Um, you know, comparatively to when you started out, a band has to hit it on the first single or they're done. Uh, it seems like where, you know. Even into the 90s, it seemed like bands could put out two or three or four albums and grow. Yeah. Uh, And I think now you'll never see another Jethro Tull or another Pink Floyd or another Genesis because if they don't have a hit song. Yeah. Yeah. It was a consumer society and and the record labels want to make millions on their product very quickly. And then that they'll either dispose of the asset, <laughs> the band, mm-hmm. and find a new one and do the same again. There's no long-term plan. Uh, that the label sort of uh, we're in a novelty. I think we're just sort of the, the novelty cli- cliche, 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 mm-hmm. or click. Got the wrong word. Uh, part of their catalogue, you know, that were there maybe for the kudos of having some classic rock bands on our label but that they, they're not investing in us because the returns are, are minimal compared to, to new acts that, that they want big numbers straight away but sometimes there's these great new acts that come out that don't even get the time to breathe no. because they you know like i i remember being younger uh going to the record store uh mm. hearing that song from uh jethro tull and mm. then going oh they have other albums out and then going backwards Nowadays, yeah. it doesn't seem like there's a, that ability for the younger people to uh, grow a band or grow an artist like that. Yeah, but, but it's worked to, to, to our advantage because it, we have real long-term fans mm-hmm. been around for as long as I've been around, and and they they stay fans the, the the whole lives. It's it's a it's a different thing, but as you say, it it, it won't happen again, and, and that's sad. You know, but in my mind, the fact there won't be a, a Hendrix. Uh, or a Neil Young, or a Jackson Brown, or a Don Henley. You know, I, I doubt if they'll be those sort of people will, will ever be again in in the music industry. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm a, I'm a bit wrong, but certainly with people like Hendrix, uh, just r- real characters that that they were that that they were that they invented it. Mm-hmm. They, they were just special. So you're going to be here January 30th, Rialto Theater. It's the 50th anniversary celebration of Aqualung. And is there going to be, you've talked about two different sets. Are you doing an intermission as well? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do our fun set. <laughs> we were doing it in Europe and it went down. At the end of the first set, they, they're going absolutely crazy. And we're going, oh no, we've got to come on and do another set. It's got to be better. So it, uh, it's nice, but but I, I promised the two sets are different. and and uh, that they work sounds like it's about a two-hour show then if if not longer yeah yeah two hours of music and then uh, what what do you want your fans to know somebody that's watching this uh to know about this show um it's you know it's a commitment and and the last eight years that i've been on my own um i i've never toll had an incredible work ethic We, we we never stopped and enjoyed what we'd attained. We, we were looking at the next project, moving on, moving on. We, we, we never sort of wallowed in the, the finances and the and all the sort of uh, luxuries. But work, 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 and and it stayed with me. And and so 
everything I do is for music and for the quality of music. And, and I've got a great band, um, you know, that they, that they, do, they do me proud. And, and we have a great show. If, if, if somebody doesn't like our show, uh, I'm quite happy because I know there's no, nothing we've done wrong. Mm-hmm. And as I said earlier, you know, it's not for everybody. Some people hate Tull's music. It's fine. <laughs> but well, uh, Music but is personal. It's got to be personal. I want it to be. And, and, uh, but w- w- we go right to the limit. And again, that's going to be here January 30th, Rialto Theatre. Get your tickets at klpx.com or the rialtotheatre.com. Speak with Martin Bar- Martin. Thank you. I, I sincerely very appreciate this. Yeah, very welcome. And, and is there a website people can hit up uh, or yeah. uh, social media that if they want to follow you? And- uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, and uh, www.martinbar.com has all, right. all the dates and, and info and yeah. All right, check out the show January 30th at the Rialto Theater. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see the show, Martin. Good. I'm, I'm going to be there. Of meeting you. I, well, I, I'm sure we'll be uh, the COVID protocols. I'll wave at you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, make, I'll make an exception. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, hold on the line. I want to get one more thing from you. Yeah, Again, sure. get your okay. tickets at klpx.com.